Right, progress report on my uh, hand pump which I'm making. I'm just about to get it ready for silver soldering now, the two body body parts. I just use brake cleaner uh, to degrease. So you need to make sure it's fully degreased and there's no chance for any oil or grease on the parts that you're soldering. And then that dries in a matter of seconds. And then uh, I'm just mixing a bit of easy flow flux up with a drop of water. And then once that brake, flu brake cleaner's uh, evaporated, you've just got to make sure you flux all your parts well on just the bit that you're soldering. If you put too much flux on and it runs all over casting, flux will follow follow it. That solder will follow it. Flux is run, and then you just got a bit more clean. So that's ready now for silver soldering. Just before I do the soldering I've I've wrapped a bit of a wire around just to hold everything keep everything in line so it don't move while I'm while I'm soldering. That's it, just let it cool down now. Right, that's silver soldering finished. I've, I've cleaned it up on wire wheel. Um, just a few other little minor details to do now. I've got this, um, this screw to fit in through here to stop the ball going back and just tidy linkages up and then it's complete. Okay, then we've got to the stage again uh, with this part where it's just about completed now. Um, I'm going to just do a quick explanation of how everything fits together and what I've done and and why I've done it and how it works for anybody that might um, might find that of interest. So, as you, as you saw in my other parts, I had two parts to this body and I've silver soldered them together. I've shown you all that. Uh, so, now the body's one complete body. <clears throat> I've got to put the, the fittings in that I've made. So, this first fitting, and they're all 5 16 by 40 threads. No, sorry, 5 16 by 32 threads so this fitting goes into the top here and that's where the outlet pipe will fit that feeds the boiler then the fitting on the top I've had to measure down to the bottom seat and determine how much the distance that this top plug had to be and it's got to be set at a distance so when this 3 16 ball is located on that seat there's got to be one thirty second of play between the stalk on this plug and the ball 
And that's to stop the ball, apparently, and I'm no expert at this, it's to stop the ball oscillating while you're pumping. If you have that... If you have that... Um, distance any greater the ball starts to oscillate and you get a diminished flow of water I believe so there's a 30 second of play on that ball now so the bottom the feed where the water comes from the tank I've put an 8BA screw now right through this uh, diameter Screw it in so that the ball is trapped when this fitting goes in. So this fitting is going to go in with this ball on the top here. And to stop the ball dropping right through the barrel, that 8BA screw will now trap it and give it a 30 second clearance when that is screwed fully home and this is to attach your bottom pipe to so if I suck on that now I don't get nothing <laughs> suck and blow <laughs> and it's opposite on the top one So, inlet, outlet. Then we've come, we come to this um, linkage. I've used sellock pins or roll pins, and I've cut them to the la to the right length, so that there are interference fit in the linkage, but a clearance fit in the pivot like that so they can't drop out and they're allowing it to swivel right so I've reamed that hole out that bore to half inch this is the pump part I've made my piston I've put a number 12 o-ring in cut a groove and put a number 12 o-ring in and then that piston is going to fit in that barrel. Well, it should do. It's a tight fit. Then it's just a matter of lining this linkage up. To fit in the slot and then I've got to put this split this uh, sellock pin through so the sellock pin or the roll pin whichever you what you call it that will be able to pivot in that hole like that but it's a tight fit in the in the piston so it'll hold in so I'll just fit that together now Right, so I've managed to get that uh, that roll pin into the last linkage, like so. And that's it now, it's all assembled now. Uh, you just I've just got to make a handle now for when it's on the loco, so I'm able to just pump with a handle. Seems to be working okay. I mean, obviously, I've not tried it in water yet, but I can I can feel it uh, blowing and sucking. Right, just fetched a little bit of water to try it. Uh, it's a bit awkward to hold it, but I'll do my best. So I've got the uh, inlet part in the water, and I'm going to try and hold it without spilling it.
and that's pumping fine. I'm really pleased with that. So in the drawing it tells you to put pins in with split pins through but I thought that looked a bit untidy. So I've put these roll pins in and uh, they can easily be knocked out if I need to disassemble it. So uh, that's another component done on me, on me loco now. Um, I'll be able to move on to the next item now, I don't know what I'm doing next but... Uh, I think I've explained everything, I don't think I've missed anything off. Obviously I've made this with castings and uh, if I hadn't got castings I would have made it just from solid pieces of bronze. Ah, so that's it, so uh, that's my hand pump done then. Uh, if you've not seen other parts to me uh, loco and my boi steam boiler which I've done, take a look at them if you're interested. Uh, and if not, I'll catch you on my next video. So, thanks for watching, and bye for now then.